pull up my intro here. Here we go. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our virtual, virtual Rebel Le Recharge Lecture. I'm Gabrielle Engel, a proud 2010 Boyd School of Law alumna and your UNLV Alumni Association President. It is my honor to personally welcome each of you here today. I would also like to give a special welcome and thanks to Renee Rivera-Gelfi, Coordinator for Programs and Events for producing today's virtual lecture. Although Rebel Recharge will be taking a summer break, we have a great lineup of other events coming up and we hope to see you there. We, uh, you can see our full schedule of events at engage.unlv.edu forward slash events. Today's discussion is entitled How to Alumni, whether it's been 10 years or 10 days, presented by Craig L. Jackson Jr. and Trisha Hilburn. Craig serves as Associate Vice President of Development and Principal Gifts at UNLV, overseeing unit fundraisers for eight colleges at UNLV. He possesses an extensive and robust career in advancement, having served in positions at UC Davis, the University of Kansas, Oklahoma State University, Arizona State University, and the University of Illinois. Craig holds a bachelor's degree from Upper Iowa University, a master's degree from the University of Kansas, and an EDD from ASU, in leadership and innovation. Trisha Hilburn has over 15 years of combined experience in marketing, athletics, and higher education development. She currently oversees annual and leadership giving, alumni engagement, and special projects for the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. Trisha holds a Bachelor of Science in Marketing from Arizona State and a Master's of Business Administration and Sports Business from St. Leo University. She also earned an EDD in Organizational Leadership with a concentration in Higher Education Administration. Please join me in welcoming Craig and Trisha. Thanks, Gabby, and hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you today. I hope that we are the best part of your Friday, your noon hour, what have you. I am excited to share the stage with my good friend, Trisha. We worked with each other at uh, WP Carey. Um, she had experience at K-State and I'm a Kansas grad. So there's a little bit of uh, rivalry here, but I love uh, just being able to, to share knowledge with her, impart wisdom with her. But the reason why I invited her is ASU is a lot like UNLV. Uh, it is housed in an urban setting uh, where there's competing things going on in the community where whether it's a basketball game, a football game, the arts, what have you. And so engaging with alumni can be a little bit tricky. And so both institutions are trying to figure out how do we reach our alums and, and help them feel connected to the university. It's not always about money, but it really is about we want you to send your kids back and, and come and see what's going on on campus. And we want you to, to mentor our students, hire our students and understand how we're evolving as an institution. So I thought Trish, Trisha would be a great person to just have uh, here with us to impart wisdom and, and share what's going on at ASU and how we can share with our alumni how to alumni, what that really looks like. So Trisha, thank you uh, for being here today. Any wise words before we get started? No, I mean, I think this is a hot topic across all universities, and so I'm excited to hear what you guys are doing and see if there's anything that we can uh, borrow or steal as well. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Cool, cool. So this will be a little bit of a, we want you to jump in here, ask us questions. Uh, we have a presentation, but we're, we're not tied to anything, but we really want this to be an engaging opportunity for us just to, to talk and have a conversation amongst friends. So again, here we're, we're here today to talk about how to an alumni. So whether you've been graduated for 10, 15, 20 years, or you just walked across the stage last month, we want to talk to you about how we want to engage with you, how we want to build a relationship with you, how we want you to be uh, an, an advocate for us out in the community, no matter where you live. If you're here in Vegas, come see us. If you're in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, we want you to love us from, from afar there as well. So. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, again, I'm here with Trisha, uh, and uh, we have a poll question for you. Renee will put this up. So what do you miss the most from your college days? I'm just going to say, personally, I miss uh, not having to worry about paying bills. I could go to the food court to eat. 
Uh, I could go spend hours in a friend's dorm room, not having to worry about anything. I just miss those days where life was a little less structured. What about you, Tricia? Uh, I picked the just enjoying life. I think the responsibility thing, but just, you know, looking back, what I could have done differently, how I could have engaged more while on campus um, to make my college experience that even more strengthened. I think as I've come back to ASU, I have seen it in a completely different light and it makes me love ASU even more. That's good, that's good. You know, one thing that I'm mindful of, especially given the demographic of our students, and I was wondering if anyone would catch this and maybe I'm not giving anyone an opportunity to, um, but we have a lot of non-traditional students that attend our institute. And so a lot of these, these questions are based on like the traditional student experience. And so one thing I wanna to pose to the group is if you had a non-traditional student experience and you're on this call with us, do you mind either putting in the chat or unmuting yourself and sharing with us maybe something you might've missed from your experience as a non-traditional student? I'll go. I was a non-traditional student at ASU. Uh, and so I worked part-time. I also lived at home. I transferred in as a sophomore. And so for me, it was kind of get onto campus and turn around and leave as quickly as I could. So that way I could go to work and get as many hours as I could. Um, I was lucky that my parents paid my tuition, but if I wanted spending money or anything else, study abroad, that came on me. And so um, that kind of took away from my experience of living in the dorms, meeting the people and building those lifelong relationships uh, in a way that I think is really great for students, but also knowing that there are opportunities to engage beyond that is something that we really need to be mindful of going forward. Yeah, no, that's really good. Uh, Linda said, I work full time and attended class at night. I missed the campus college experience. Yeah. Same for Amanda. And you know, I think like as professionals, Trisha, like that's something that we we don't think through, right? When we go out and we make a call as a fundraiser, right? We both fundraise in our full-time jobs. But when I sit across from an alum, I never really stop and, and think like, hey, so tell me about your college experience as a non-traditional student. Cause I tend to draw on, did you go to the football games? Were you in a fraternity, a sorority? And what was it like on campus? Was there a lot of energy? And I can't tell you how many Know, alumni that I've met with over the years that are like, yeah, it was a little bit different for me. You know, I had to work in, and support the family. And so college for me was like, I was in, I was the older one with the group of students. And so I didn't know where I fit in and could I really engage with them. And some of them didn't want to have study sessions with me because they didn't see me on campus. And so I think that's something that like, as, in, as alumni and development professionals, we have to kind of retool our way of engaging with alumni so that we can truly meet them where their experience was at. Have you, do you see that as well, Tricia? Uh, I have, I mean, not so much, I think on the undergrad level, but I will say, you know, like our online MBA alumni, uh, but it's been really interesting because I feel like, you know, for an online education, you're not that engaged because you may not ever come to campus or you just don't have that affinity unless it's really cohorted well. Uh, but our full-time, I mean, our online MBA alumni seem to have had a fantastic online experience, which I think is very interesting and something that I wouldn't have guessed uh, before going into these, these meetings with people, but they just, they walked away with yeah. such pride and um, a wonderful experience for them that, you know, has motivated them to stay engaged in some capacity. Yeah, love that. Kalia, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, I, I like that. I mean, everyone who have who has had a non-traditional experience has essentially been the same. So then I guess for you all, what does engagement look like then? Like if you think about the the, the college experience, and Alex, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to you here quickly. Uh, it'd be good to hear from your you all like if you didn't have the traditional college experience, like what does it really mean to connect back with UNLV? Uh, but before, Alex, uh, you had your hand raised. Go ahead and okay. unmute yourself. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Using the speaker on the computer. Um, and it's, I don't know, the camera can't get to work. No, but uh, when you asked about non traditional, non traditional, I, I attended UNLV as an undergraduate, and all of my friends, it, it seemed like it, we were all traditional. Traditional for us meant working and going to class. And we all lived in the area and living at home. And I thought that was traditional. 
But then I left college. I was, oh, traditional is actually moving away out of home and I didn't do that. So I guess now traditional, I, there is no traditional because uh, people go online and um, I guess undergraduate, that traditional and graduate, I went to graduate school too. And that, you can argue that not be traditional, traditional, I don't know what it is now, but um, yeah. So it's interesting how to stay engaged traditionally or not traditionally. So. No, that's good, Alex. And another, another, another brilliant point connected to an earlier statement, we as like development people, we, we kind of think about it in just a certain mindset and we have to evolve to step back. I mean, even when you say like, well, how do you define traditional and not traditional? Traditional to you was everybody is working and, and, and they come to school and they go to work and they go home. And that is very much our student experience. And so as we as an institution and at the UNLV Foundation, we think about what does engagement look like for our alumni? Uh, how do we reach them where, they are, where they're at? But how do we recognize the traditions of the institution? I think for us, we have to step back and say, well, let's go to them. And I think that's why we wanna have these monthly engagements with the Rebel Recharge series is we can come to you as professionals and we're using our own vernacular. And Alex, I thank you for correcting me and saying, well, maybe that's not, exactly correct based on our setting. So I love that. Trisha, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I agree. I think, you know, if you look at the, the evolution of ASU, we were very kind of like UNLV. I mean, a very heavy uh, school where people came and went, and that was traditional in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think it's changed a lot, um, but keeping that in mind because their experience was different than the students living in the dorms or that played sports or that were in a sorority. And we've got to be mindful of those folks as well, because it really was a large number of our alumni base, yeah. um, especially with, you know, the scale that we've seen at ASU over the last 20, 30 years is just completely different than it was, you know, before that and, and the years following. So our, the next question uh, that we have is like, what is an alumni? And Trisha, you and I will both kind of answer this. I'll, I'll go first. So I went to a small school in Iowa. Uh, we had about a thousand students and 95% of the students stayed on campus their freshman and sophomore years. So very, very small community. Um, and then I went to the University of Kansas right after graduating. And again, college town, most, Freshmen stay on campus, a lot of institutional traditions, and like you get this like raw rawness. And so when I when I went to Arizona State uh, to work, very much a commuter school. Traditions, I mean, you had Forkham, but like traditions are kind of hit or miss depending on like what group you get into. And so to me, like initially the definition of alumni is like someone who like has this like connection back to the university, knows the fight song, like. Wears all the, the 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 apparel, goes to the football games, gives back, like just wherever you go, you know, like, hey, that person is a Jayhawk or that person is a rebel or that person's a Sun Devil. And I think like I connected to the how engaged their experience was for them instead of seeing it as like this business thing. Like you got a degree from here, so you're an alumni. To me, it's like, but were you like in integral and like, did you integrate yourself to like all the things on campus? That's kind of how I see an alumni, but what do you see it as Trisha? How would you define it? I, you know, it's funny cause I, I'm a ASU alum and uh, I guess I didn't fully understand that because you know, we're not a college town. There's not really a full true college town in Arizona. Uh, and then I went to, to Kansas State University and it was just an eye opening experience. They talk about K-State family they bleed purple. Everybody goes to the football games. Everybody will answer your call when you say, hey, I'm a K-Stater coming to visit you wherever you are. And it was just, it was a completely different environment. And then coming back here was almost the culture shock again. And you had to reset your mind to, people have, you know, the, a, a level of affinity to ASU, but nowhere near as strong as it did to, to K-State or KU is probably the exact same way, just different colors and, you know, different traditions. But um, I think for schools like ours, we need to, we need to build the tradition in some sense, whether that is the small things like the forkum or, you know, holding up the pitchfork for us, those little things. But um, 
there's so much more that we could do because it, it expands way beyond just knowing of the fight song, going to the football games. Cause again, that's not for everybody. And so finding out what is of interest to people and then highlighting those things and sharing that and saying, how can we continue that legacy and, and continually build on that? Love that. Love that. So here is what the dictionary says. The definition of a alumni is so pretty standard, but I want to call out Renee a little bit here because she had a great point when we met yesterday or Wednesday and we talked about like alumni and the student experience. The reality for at least our students, we have a significant amount of first generation students that attend UNLV. I am almost certain the word alumni, philanthropy, development, none of those words ever came up in their households. And so as we try to redefine what the traditional student experience is, right? And as we try to talk about alumni engagement, I hypothesize that maybe we're missing a lot of people because we're using, again, vernacular that's that's normal in our profession, but it isn't really normal when we talk about individuals who are going to college who don't know what the traditional, traditional experience really looks like. So I guess the question then becomes like, how do we find ways to pivot to resonate with our alumni, our graduates of the institution in a way that it honors their experience? What's your thought on that, Tricia? I mean, a, a lot of it's just educating, educating about all of that, because as a first generation student, probably like Renee, I mean, it wasn't spoken about. My, my parents didn't fully understand when I'd come home crying because, you know, something seemed hard or I didn't understand or how I could engage myself further. Um, and I think that is something that we need to put into the classroom more and say, you know, highlight the stories, right, of the recipients of the scholarships or the programmatic support or how philanthropy has helped really move the needle uh, across the institution. Because that way it's not pressuring anybody to give. It's not saying we want your money because a lot of people think that that's all we want from you. But it, it goes beyond that because building that affinity, you know, hopefully does lead to a gift. But, you know, it's, it's so much more than just that. Oh, yeah. So I love the word that you said, like K-State, they do like K-State family. And again, I'm a Midwest guy. I grew up in Texas and I'm not the biggest a and fan. And there's different ways to term their alumni, but they are as close knit as close knit can be. And I'm sure they don't call each other alumni, right? But you know that if you're an a and grad and you apply for a job and the hiring manager is an Aggie, you're gonna have a good shot to get that job. And I wonder how we can do that. Like at, at UNLV, again, I might be a fundraiser and I oversee fundraising, but I want like our graduates to see themselves as part of our success. And I want them to be a part of the rebel family. And so I think about this, like how do we use words matter? How do we use our language to uh, better articulate what the mission is for like the Alumni Association or the UNLV Foundation? And it's something that if I would say what keeps me up at night, it isn't, well, we need to raise more money. It's how do we connect our graduates more to like where we're trying to go as a university? And maybe it's like, if we can change the way we use our words and say, not alumni, but like, hey, as a part of the Rebel family, we're coming to you today to say, hey, come into our students, hire our students, and also give back. But I think that's something that we have to learn. We have to be cognizant of as we go out and we meet with our, our students and we say, hey, welcome to UNLV. You're now part of the family. As you go on to be successful, reach back out to your family to, to hire and to, to support them. No different you do with your traditional family. Does that kind of make sense? I think it needs to be done almost, I call it negative day one, right? So the day that you get your acceptance letter before you ever step foot on campus, that you know that you are now part of something bigger. Yeah. Uh, K-State, I think, does a fantastic job with that. I still follow their, their university and their foundation, and they send this amazing letter that's, you know, much bigger than a normal letter, but is welcoming them to that family. And it's purple, and it's white, and it's warm and fuzzy. And that's what sucks them in. I mean, that's what makes them want to bleed purple at the end of the day. And, you know, I think we need to, again, start doing that earlier and saying you are part of this amazing community 
And we hope that you'll continue to be a part of that long beyond your time here on campus. Love that. And it sounds like that is ingrained across the, the university. It doesn't just fall on one, one office or one division. Absolutely. It's like everybody knows that this is the student experience from admissions to financial aid, to the foundation, to the athletics department, so on and so forth. So that's pretty good. Absolutely. All right, to the crowd, what does being an alumni mean to you? Can I get one volunteer? Well, I'm gonna unmute myself. I am gonna participate in this section. Thanks, Craig, for putting me on the spot. Uh, but no, exactly. I was a non-traditional student, first-gen student. It was not talked about in my household. I did not know what the word alumni meant. Um, and again, now that I work for the Alumni Association, my eyes are wide open. Um, working for the university, I now have the college experience, but from a professional level, not from a student level. And so just again, like kind of what Trisha alluded to is we need to plant the seed early. What that looks like from their admissions acceptance all the way through that you are a part of the Rebel Forever family. What does that mean? How can we serve you? We have so many benefits that we can offer to our students and to our alumni, um, including like career services, things like that. So again, creating that pipeline, building that bridge, knowing that we're here to support them, not to ask for anything, that we're here to support them and create that infinity. So, um, so I think it's important and I love that we're having this conversation. Um, and I know that we have several uh, alumni on, on this webinar now, and I would love to hear from them of what it means, um, what their affinity to UNLV is and how we can support them in the long term. Love it. Leroy, my friend, what you got for me? Well, I, I, I would say probably our, our definition of alum probably needs to go beyond what the dictionary is because, I mean, yes, if you graduate from UNLV, presto, you're automatically an alum. But does that mean you're connected? Does that mean you're engaged? Um, and, and unfortunately, with the large number of non traditional students that we've got, or, you know, maybe that word non traditional is not, not, not true. What we all think of it is, is, you know, as being anymore, but, but, from a traditional sense, those non-traditional students, they, um, you know, maybe it's it's something that 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 we have to reconnect with, with with them a little bit. But I also don't think that I mean, you guys, uh, Trish, I'll just use you as an example. You said you were a non-traditional student, but at your age, surely you don't want to go to a frat party and get rip roaring drunk and then come home. I mean, in front of your kids that way, do you? That's I got a fun story about that one. <laughs> one we offer in our alum anymore. You know, I mean, I'm sorry that you missed out on that traditional experience, but maybe it's a good thing you missed out on that. Um, but but I, I don't think that's what you want to do now. So I, I think reconnecting with them from a career standpoint, you know, like what we're doing now with our career services or um, or maybe getting them started from day one, you know, when they go to graduate. Um, Gabby, when she does her address to the graduates and Stacy, when she does her address to the graduates to let them know that they are now part of, of that UNLV family. Um, and and Tricia, just so that you know, I, I've I spent eight years at, at K-State Lafine Health Center from 93 to 2000. So I, I kind of yes. understand your K-State stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I mean, it's, that, that's interesting that you say that the working student, you know, then my thought is, you know, I, I was the, the traditional age when I started at ASU um, and I joined a sorority at, at my junior year. So I was in a, the oldest one in my pledge class by like three years and it was not the same experience. I mean, it was very weird because they were all going to the parties and I'd been there, done that. And, you know, um, but should we start creating something for the working student as a student club or org or um, more of that working professional fraternity, right? That's again, indoctrinating them together with people that are like-minded, like place in their, their life, but they can still have that kind of similar experience. Uh, with not, you, know, you don't necessarily want to eliminate the ones that may be interested because they are much more mature in their mindset or just want to be around those like-minded people. Um, but is that something that we should look into creating? No, I love that. Great job. Kalia? Am I, and please let me know if I'm pronouncing yeah. your name incorrect. Yeah, Kalila. Um, I'm Kalila. Kalila. You, gotcha. yeah. you were almost there. It's fine. <laughs> um, for me, I'm part of being... <laughs> For me, part of being an alumni really goes back to community. I think there might be um, some space to connect UNLV with the outside community a little more. So like I didn't graduate 
like you said, I was a, I was also a first generation student. So getting a master's degree was like, everybody was just so excited, right? Um, so I wasn't going to school for me. I was going to school for my family. I was going to school for the black community of Las Vegas because this is where I plan to stay. So they'll get my expertise and my services. I think if there's a way to maybe connect. So for example, UNLV has the, um, uh, not the day of giving, service day, Rebel Service Day. I think that was probably one of my favorite things to attend. Like I took off of work. I worked full time through grad school, but I would take off of work so that I could come to UNLV, have my red shirt and, you know, go do some volunteering. Um, if there was a way to connect more community and, and academics, I think for me, that would probably draw me in more. Not that I'm not drawn in now. I'm just saying like in general, I like the idea of being more community focused, if that's a thing. No, that's good. That's really good. And I know that's something we talk about you know, internally is how do we serve our community better? But then we struggle to really contextualize what that looks like and how do we not get in our own mind of seeing alumni, seeing connection from a metric space, but truly from a donor's engaged ex experience. So that's really good. Any other thoughts or comments? And I see uh, a couple of posts in the chat box. No, Jen, with what you said, I think about legacy, right? So we all attend a university and once we graduate, we have this legacy that we either leave at the institution or that we become a part of. And so part of being an alumni is like, what's your part of the legacy or that tradition of the, the university? All right, next. So Trisha, my question for you, uh, and this is, could be something that, that we both talk about. So how have you served your alma mater as an alumnus or an alumnae? So this is just kind of our examples of how do we get back and how do we uh, participate at our various institutions? I mean, obviously giving is a, a piece of it, but I think sharing the word of what the programs are doing or what research, I think, again, being in the unit and knowing this stuff is a different advantage than others. Um, but a lot of people don't really realize all the amazing things that we're doing on campus. They, they see the cranes, they think ASU, I just had a call this morning, and they're saying how much money ASU has, which, you know, it appears that way from the outside, but really, we only get about 6%, you know, from the state in terms of funding and what we're doing with all the cranes and all the building and development that we're participating in is to create the longevity and the legacy for ASU so that tuition can stay fairly affordable and that we can keep bringing in students because it's about who we include and not who we exclude. And so we still need those resources from people. We still need you to send your students. We still need companies to hire our talent. We, we need all of those things to continually developing and being a place of hope for a lot of people. Uh, again, a lot of our students are first generation or Pell Grant eligible. And so we want to be able to provide educational opportunities to all of those students, regardless of your financial capacity or, or other. Absolutely. So I can't just, I'm engaged. I serve on the Dean's advisory board. And then I also assist the Dean as uh, they think about, um, so the Dean of the, the School of Education, as they embrace diversity, equity, inclusion. And what made me grow my love for KU even deeper was seeing them pivot as an institution after the, the murder of George Floyd. And then them invite me to help them think about this. Like what, all right, so from a student perspective, what did we miss or how can we serve our students? And I just want to dispel that, the, the myth that as fundraisers, we care a little about the engagement because I've seen it from my own experience that like once KU asked me for my own like intellectual thoughts, I was like, wow, they value me. That's what it means to be an alum, that I can go back and share just kind of my own personal experience and help them change for the students that are currently there and the students that they hope to, to recruit um, and, and apply to come to Kansas. And that goes back to what Jen said in the chat. And so it made me just have this deeper love for my alma mater. And I think that's what we also want to connect here at UNLV is while the money is important, because we want to support our students. We want to support the infrastructure needs of the university as we move forward. 
I think like there's these thought processes that we might miss because we're so focused on like state law and, and institutional policies and procedures that leaning on our alumni who might be working out in an industry that can tell us like, hey, this is what we've done in our work setting and it's helped us out. Why can't you do this for your students? And I think if we can find ways to engage with our alumni in that way, the thought process, diversity of thought, I think that really does help us become a more holistic institution. Any thoughts from the, the, the group? How do you serve UNLV? Or even if you have another alma mater, how do you serve your alma mater? Feel free to throw it in the chat box too. Craig, I'll jump in on this one. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, as president of the Alumni Association, <laughs> Um, but I, I think most people who know me know this. I only went to grad school at UNLV, so I was not an undergraduate student. So I'm still, uh, I went to a very small private women's college in Northeast Georgia. So the nature of my undergraduate experience was obviously much different than you would get at the state university level. Um, and I, I stay really connected to them as well, but I don't have, because I'm across the country, I don't have the opportunities for the level of engagement that I would probably want if I was closer. And I'm so grateful that I found that at UNLV. <clears throat> and so, you know, that's, I really, you know, I'm, I, I was not, I was a traditional law student. I went full-time day program, but I, I mean, I'll be quite honest with you. I parked in the parking garage. I walked down to law school. Sometimes I went to the student union for lunch and I went home. I did nothing on campus. I was not engaged. I didn't really attend events. Um, and and it's, I don't think that my law school experience was quite different from a lot of people because they think that, you know, when in grad school, that's, that's what you do, right? You're really focused on your studies and your education. <clears throat> um, and I disappeared for like three years. And, you know, I think another, another point that really helped me was the connection with the faculty. You know, I think in your student experience, when you build that relationship with the faculty, when you have the faculty that value the connection with the students, that's what pulled me back into the circle. I disappeared for three years after I graduated. And then I, uh, faculty from, from the law school reached out and told me that my mentor recommended me for the alumni chapter. And but for her recommendation, I probably never would have applied to be on the board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another really um, valuable connection point for the student experience as well as building those relationships with the faculty and the teachers. Love that. That's good. Any other comments? And I see you in, in the chat, Jen. All right, we have another poll question for you. What do you believe keeps alumni from engaging with the university? And for those who select other, please put that in the chat box. I would be intrigued to learn. <laughs> All of the above, love it. No, you're not totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, the, the sentiment that uh, feeling that the university does not care about them, I think I've heard that so many times, so many times meeting one-on-one -on -one with alumni. It's either you're only going to call me because you want money, or I've been, I've been gone for 20, 30, 40 years, and not a single person has ever reached out to me. So why would I re-engage now? I mean, that's a consistent theme. Like, you don't care about me, you just want something from me. Anything stands out to you, Tricia, as we see the results? I mean, I, I'm not surprised at the lack of knowledge. That's the one I selected. Um, you know, I mean, for us, we're such a large institution. We're just the business school alone as 120,000 alumni. And so where, where do you start? Who do you connect with? I mean, I, since I work closely with alumni relations and our Marcom team, um, you know, I see the, the key challenges too, right? So we send out an email newsletter to the masses quarterly. We have an event roundup monthly, but because it's sent through marketing cloud, it traditionally goes to your junk mail because unless you've engaged with that, you just, you don't even know and you miss it. I am a weirdo and check my spam mail regularly. 
So I see all that stuff, but if you don't know that that's where it's going, then you just think that no one's reaching out or we're not doing anything to highlight that. Or you get the complete opposite and you get bombarded by 75 different entities within the university and then you're overwhelmed. And again, it's too much. You hit the, please take me off your email list and then you're completely unengaged. And so we're having conversations of how do you, how do you connect with the engaged versus the non-engaged? And then how do you move the non-engaged to the engaged yeah. over time? And so we're trying to figure out what that formula looks like. We're working with the external relations hub um, at ASU on a larger scale. They've got a, a new person set to oversee all that. And we're kind of the pilot program of really, how do you, how do you take all of the information of people engaging in even the most minimal way and start building that relationship back in a meaningful way for them and whatever that way looks like, right? Time, talent, treasure. And I'm, I'm calling it time, talent, treasure plus now because the plus is now coming back for additional degrees or certificates or continued education, lifelong learning, any of that, um, because that is now just as important to us here at WB Carey as the time and the talent and, you know, the giving back. Now, and see you later, Gabby. Thanks for being on. So, you know, I've worked at several different institutions and everybody is struggling to figure out how to crack the code. How do you engage your alumni? Now, some schools, they may have 300,000 alumni and 100,000 are engaged and they're worried about the 200,000. <laughs> and some, the, it skews a little bit on the other end of the spectrum. But I think that the challenge is like, there's so many different interests that our alumni might have. A lot of them have kids now, young kids. How do you engage an alum with young kids to come back to campus or to mentor or to come to a football game? I mean, there's so many things that we have to think through. And I think sometimes we get so bogged down into what we think is right instead of just going to the alums and saying, hey, let us know how you want to be engaged and we'll go forward from there. Or we over communicate. We send them an email from WP Carey, an email from ASU, an email from ASU Foundation, an email from athletics, an email from the department that they graduated from. We do the same thing here at UNLV. And so what really makes me excited is like with our Rebel Recharge series, we're just gonna bring things to alumni and say, we hope this, this resonates with you and we're gonna do it virtually because now we've learned that the world, you can engage with people virtually and they're okay with that. But how do we find the right topics? Or uh, I think the Alumni Association did a movie on the lawn day a couple of weeks back, right? Bring your kids and bring your family. We have Skittles, we have a movie. And it was like really cool to be able to engage with folks that way as well. And so I think we're trying to do the best we can at UNLV. But the other thing that gives me comfort is we're not the only institution. Everyone's trying to figure it out. So one thing we recently did, we're still kind of in the process, but it has been the largest uh, engagement we've had with our alumni is something called the Oral History Project. So we partnered with a third party organization and we just asked our alumni to share stories of their time here. We've had, I don't know, 10,000 people share their stories of their time here. We would have never received that kind of feedback from people if we tried to do it ourselves. Um, and they, you know, it's gonna be a great way for us to learn about our alumni, learn what was important to them and hopefully be able to take that and then target our engagement with them and say, you mentioned this, did you know X, Y, and Z? And then hopefully, again, that just strengthens that partnership between the alum and then us as an institution and figuring out what is the path looking forward look yeah. like for them? No, Tricia, one thing we haven't talked about that I remember being a, a challenge at ASU while I was there, um, the president's uh, removal of fraternity and sorority houses and how that really disconnected a, a significant amount of alumni, right, who are part of Greek life that no longer had that history. And I know they've since rebuilt uh, some type of Greek housing community, but can you speak a little bit about from your experience how that challenge and how ASU has overcome that challenge to date? Yeah, I think it's it's significantly better now. I think that it's been long enough. It's probably been four years that the Greek Leadership Village was created. Um, and I, I think it's going to be a different kind of connection back to the university for the future generations than it was for the people who had the houses that, I mean, to be honest, people probably shouldn't have been living there <laughs> for the last 10 years anyway. But um, I think by building that village back, 
people were still upset, but now they're seeing that there's still a focus of what that community brings to the students, what it brings back to the alumni. And, um, you know, I think, I think it's helped tremendously, but I still think there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, again, for us, it's a scaling issue. I also think making sure that people have their updated contact information. Uh, you know, we're happy to share whatever it is that's important to you, but if we don't have that, then we can't engage with you in any way that's meaningful whatsoever. Um, one thing our office has implemented maybe within the last few months is we've got a, a line on the bottom of every single email that we send out that says, please, we'd love to connect with you. Please update your alumni information. And so you can just click a link and do it without having to respond back to us, but it goes out to every single person that we're outreaching with. And I would love to see it be across at minimum WP Carey for all faculty, for all staff, for anybody that's working here, that every e email is, please update your contact information. We'd love to keep in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I asked that question is uh, for my fellow rebels who's on this call, we've experienced a lot of change at the university from the president on down. And so as you go through change as a university, it does affect alumni engagement, right? Because we, there, there's a sentiment of like, we don't even know what's going on over there. Or in some instances when change happens, traditions get switched, right? And you saw that at ASU with the, with the, uh, the demolishing of, of Greek houses. And so that's something that I think we're very cognizant of, uh, is with so much change, the university will continue to evolve and look differently from those who might've graduated five years ago, 20 years ago, but how do you create that pride, that pride, right? That you're still proud of where the institution is going, despite the face may change in the presidency the building may change where you went to class and now it's a new updated modern building, so on and so forth. Um, but it is something that I think is, is uh, it has an impact on alumni engagement in some way. I think it's being transparent about, you know, what, yes, they got rid of the houses here for, you know, all the Greek housing, but the houses were in shambles. And so now they've got beautiful, new, very HGTV looking facilities but also that the growth that we're having and what we're bringing into those spaces where the houses were is going to bring in endless amount of dollars to support programs and research and students. And it's going to create a whole new set of future memories for people. I mean, in part of the spot where we had um, half of the stadium for the track and field yeah. is now where our hockey team has an arena that we're gonna be creating those new memories with having a phenomenal hockey program. We're having the Coyotes come in and sit in that facility for a handful of years. And so that's gonna just, again, tie the community back to campus in a different way. And so it's it's sharing what the future vision is and not just saying change for change. You know, Having the story behind it and sharing what great things can come out of that, I think needs to be done more across campus, at least here at ASU. And I'm assuming there too is, there is so much going on. Why, why did you tear down my favorite building? You know, what, why did you get rid of this? You know, and it's, there's so many reasons behind it. Just share what those are so that people can get excited about what is coming in the future. You know, you bring up a good example. It's easier to bring the community to athletics, right? Having the Coyotes be with the hockey facility. But to Kalila's uh point, how do we do that with academics? I, I oversee the School of Business here at UNLV, and so we're going to be building a new building for them. And that has been the biggest piece of conversation for us is how is the community element of the building represented? So because we have a lot of students who may work during the day and come to the school at night or vice versa, how is the new building going to be something that they can park and sit? hey, I only have a couple hours bef between classes and I have to head to work, uh, to work at a casino or, or, or a hotel. Can I stay here and do my homework? Is this an inviting building? Is there food and beverage there? Can I meet with my faculty members? Is there tutoring and advising available? Those types of things. And so that is something that we want to make sure is in the new buildings but it's much harder to do that with the older buildings. And so I think there's this deliberateness behind bringing the community aspect into it, but you have to be intentional. And if you're not intentional, you're gonna miss that whole opportunity there. And then it's just, look at the cranes that you're doing. You're spending a ton of money instead of, oh, you're spending a ton of money, but now I have a 
a place to call home when I'm on campus. So that's something that I've thought through. Question for you, Trisha, and for everyone, honestly, what misconceptions exist about alumni engagement? That it requires a lot of time. Uh, you can give as much or as little time as you want. You get to decide what that engagement looks like. If you've only got an hour to pop on a lunchtime chat via Zoom, you know, then we welcome that. If you wanna come in for a happy hour, we welcome that. If you want a one-on-one -on -one visit, if you want to come sit back in a class, we would love to have you come back and sit on a class uh, and we will do everything we can to get you there. So it's, it's really about um, dream it and we can try to figure out a way to make it work for the most part because we want you to get excited about coming back. Absolutely. So I think the biggest misconception is like you're only engaging with me because of money. Yep. And so it's like, no, it's, it's more than just money. I can't tell you how many times, no matter the institution, I've inv invited an alum back for them to give a tour of campus for their grandchild or for one of their kids that's looking at the institution for school. And because they're engaged with us, we can, we can give a better tour than what if they would have just went through admissions. We can help you tour the, the football field and walk the field and take photos and meet the mascot and all kinds of things like that. So to your point, Tricia, alumni engagement, it isn't time consuming, but when you're engaged with us, we can create that unique experience that you otherwise wouldn't be able to have. Leroy. Um, yeah, I think one of the, probably the other misconceptions about alumni engagement is, is that a lot of people think it is only about money and that's just not the case. Uh, there's, there's so much more things you can do with engagement, um, you know, with your, with your time and talents other than, you know, writing a check um, for those, who want that, that's fine. We'll be happy to do that as well too. Um, but if you don't have the money to spend, then then I would be willing just to take your time and your talents um, and your effort and energy other than your money um, to be engaged with the various chapters and other things like that that, that the um, alumni groups can, can offer at least. Oh, great point, great point. Renee, you had unmuted yourself earlier. You wanna jump in here? I was just going to say it was that we want money. Um, but I decided to add it in the chat instead. Yeah. And I see other comments in the chat. I think everyone's you know, raising a good point. Uh, the good old boys uh, piece, that, <laughs> that makes me laugh. Because, I mean, I've been at institutions where you walk into the suite, the football suites, and it, it's a different experience. There's business being done, but it's a different experience for sure. I don't know if that's necessarily our experience at UNLV, and I don't know how we dispelled some of that, but it is something that we definitely need to work through. I know Trisha and I, when we uh, worked at ASU, we could probably say that was the experience there too at the football suites or even at the suites uh, at the Suns Arena, talking uh, talking sick. Any other comments, questions? Go ahead, Leroy, jump in here. Um, I, I think the other thing I was, I was listening to some of you guys talk about that some of the different changes Within your, your, within your universities and things. And, and definitely UNLP has, has seen a lot of changes. Um, I mean, when I was in school, you could still drive through campus and, and they closed that Harmon Road now, so you can't even do that anymore. But, but, but I also think that could be used to our advantage because it's such an easy way to engage with some of our alumni when we bring them back to campus and show them that the building, you know, the BHS building that now houses all the health science stuff exists now, whereas before, you know, when we were here, this was a parking lot, and maybe that's a, a an in and our first step that we can get to start to engage faculty is to come back to campus and say, look at all the changes that have been that have taken place since you, you since you left, and and sometimes that might only have been five years ago, and sometimes that might have been fifteen years ago. Yep. Nope. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. I think for the most part, we've talked about common reasons why people do not get involved. Um, but are there any other examples that might have popped into anyone's mind? I think I'm location saying. plays a big piece in it, too. I mean, we have a lot of alumni that are on the East Coast, and that's where I travel to visit with alumni. And they say, you know, it's really hard for us. We don't, there's not a lot out there. And so we're trying to be mindful of that. Um, you know, we've started doing some events to where we're inviting them to get together and connect. And we're hoping that they will continue that on their own when we're not there. Do a lunch and learn with your different organizations, invite people to your office, 
uh, the dean and I back in 2019 went to Atlanta and visited with an alum who was president of a company that made sustainable shoes. It was one of the last kind of companies there. And it was so fun to just walk through the warehouse, learn about the shoe company that this girl's father started when it was like the leather capital of America, I think, a gazillion years ago. Um, but we were hoping that they would continue that, invite other people there to learn. They didn't even know this company existed. You see the shoes that are, they'll be in Target or they'll be in Walgreens. And I see them now and it brings a smile to my face, right? Because I'm like, I've been there. I have a pair of those shoes. Like it was just such a great experience that, you know, letting them take that lead a little bit too. Like we can help connect and start building those relationships together, but take the lead on it. And just whether it's one or 20 of you, you know, start building your own community because it's really about the community building. That is the, the key to moving anything forward. I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think uh, that's why we're, again, why we're doing the Rebel Recharge series is to find ways to connect even through distance. Uh, we play Notre Dame this year in football, and that's going to be an exciting opportunity to wow. flood the, the Chicago uh, area and see our alumni that might have moved away, uh, celebrate us upsetting Notre Dame. I'm going to say it loud and proud <laughs> right now. Don't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> do not we might win and pull off an upset but we can at least be confident right now that there's a chance <laughs> but I mean those are the things that we have to do as an institution and something that I'm asking my fundraisers to do go out across the nation and say hi to people visit with people surprisingly we have a significant amount of alumni in Hawaii that's a good opportunity for us to go visit them. I mean, I'd love to visit Hawaii and say it's a business expense. Why not do that? But I think the common reasons why people aren't engaged is we tend to stay on campus and think about those alums that's within the easy area for us to commute to instead of thinking like, how do we utilize Zoom technology or WebEx? How do we go visit them where they're at? Because it does mean something where, and I can't tell you how many times now, I've called an alum that might be in Boston using uh, the area, the, the office phone at the institution, and they get giddy because they're like, I haven't seen this area coding. God knows how long. Like, you're going to be out here? Cool. I'll drop everything and I'll visit with you. It just means something to them. So I think that's, a, that's important for us to go meet them where they're at. I know that we are running up against time. So here are a list of ways for alumni to get engaged and involved with us. Uh, share it with your friends, um, share it with family members, but we definitely uh, are open to other opportunities to get engaged with us. Uh, Trisha, anything that might be missing on here? <sighs> just sharing the word, wearing your, your clothes with pride, you know, be a rebel out on the streets, <laughs> figuratively, maybe not literally. Um, <laughs> uh, but just, you know, just say what a great, great place it was. I mean, for us, you know, we throw up the pitchfork or case date, it's same with the go cats. I mean, you know, just walking down the street and you see somebody that's part of that and stop them and just say, I just wanted to say hi to a, a fellow sun devil. I mean, when I worked for K-State, I was literally hiking down the Grand Canyon wearing a K-State shirt and some girl stopped me on the trail and said, oh my gosh, did you go to K-State? And I said, no, I, but I worked there and we stopped and chatted for a few minutes. And so just, again, that warm feeling of being one family is, I think, the biggest thing that you can do for your university as an alum and will take it forward more than you could ever imagine. Love it, love it. Well, as we wind down, we have a couple more minutes left here. Wanted to open up the floor for any Q&A before we uh, sign off. All right, well, I hope I lived up to uh, the promise that we would be the best part of your noon hour. Um, please stay connected to the Alumni Association. Uh, I know it's hot out there, so any ways that you can engage with us inside the air conditioning, please do that. But truly, thank you for spending this time with us. Uh, we are here to serve you all. Uh, we're here to represent UNLV. We're excited about what the future has in store. Trisha, thank you, my good friend, and sharing 
your experience at ASU, your experience at other institutions, but just being with us today. Um, I'm committed to, to being here at UNLV and, and helping us connect with our alumni in a more efficient way, reaching them where they're at, but also this unique experience that oftentimes we don't give our alumni. That's really, really, really important to me. So stay engaged with us. I know Renee, there's more events coming up. Uh, she put that in the, in the chat. Uh, there's going to be more Rebel Recharge events. I love this. Thank you for inviting me to be here today. Uh, I love to hear myself speak all the time. So any ways that I can do this, please let me know. Trisha, you don't shake your head today. He's that. not kidding. <laughs> You're great, great at it. So I just want to take the moment, the time to say thank you so much for creating this time for us to have this engaging conversation. Um, you hit it right on the nail. Like we do need to engage with our alumni. How can we do that? How can we break those barriers down? Um, because what we do is for alumni, it's not for our own self. So we wanna hear from you. We wanna be engaged with you. What can we do? How can you get involved? We're here to serve you. So thank you again so much for spending your afternoon with us and go Rebels. Go Rebels. Thank you all. It was very informative to learn about other institutions and what they're doing. And um, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. I'm happy to share what we know and what we're learning along the way and um, continue partnering on stuff like this because we want our alumni to be as engaged as possible. And that's across the United States. So. All right. Well, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.